Hercules, Hercules, strong arm your whole team. You do not want war with this one. When Heracles broke out of Rim's ice gems that froze him, she was in utter shock that he took no damage. With just sheer willpower, Heracles broke out of Gil's chains with his last human life when he was nearing his death. Mind you that these are the chains of heaven which are literally designed to restrict gods. Unlike the other servants that can be evaded with easy tactics, Ren can't even escape the grip of Heracles without a proper response. In the brief time that Ren was in his possession, it was causing her agonizing pain. Sable tried to do normal attacks on this same arm and the sword just bounced off of it. Her interference didn't make him loosen his grip at all. Ren mentioned that in order to stop from being crushed by Heracles, her body would have to be stronger than steel. She also mentioned that she had to reinforce her stomach to stop him from juicing her right then and there. When he was going up against Saber and she tried to lunge her sword, he caught it in his hand and ignored the damage. Despite having his axe sword in one hand, he was still flinging Salter around like a rag doll in the other. In a bad end, you had Heracles get a hold of Ren and crush her body into nothing. In just one leap, he's able to get across dozens of meters in an instant. He can jump extremely high with ease, borderline rivaling low-level flight. In his fight against Salter, you had him close the gap between them in literal seconds, visibly breaking the sound barrier while doing so? Who needs an elevator? In Carnival Phantasm, you had Heracles casually jump 10 floors while carrying Kukulin and then turn around and crush Medea on top of that. In FGO, Heracles not only had the agility, but the strength to jump all the way from a ship to an island that was at least a kilometer away. In Carnival Phantasm, he casually picked up Kukulin by the head with just one hand. Do not let Heracles fool you just because he makes it look easy. The sheer weight of him just dropping his sword is enough to send it through three floors. That's a full workout just to do battle. His casual strength is enough to carry an entire tree over his shoulder while jumping. In his fight against Saber, just him missing one of his attacks was enough to slice an entire car in half. In a bad end, you had Heracles take Ren's life by piercing his sword straight through her chest. He landed a devastating blow to Saber in their battle to the point where she could hardly stand afterwards. The story itself telling us that his wingspan made this impossible to block. In an attempt to help Saber, Shiro got his whole stomach blown out by just one hit from Heracles. Just the pure shockwaves of Heracles missing his attacks was still enough to cause damage in his fight against Emiya. In his fight against Saber during the fade route, you had him land yet another fatal hit, blowing off a portion of her armor. In FGO, he took on a nerfed Artemis, David, Mash, and Atalanta at the same time and they still couldn't hold him. David literally having to sacrifice himself to gain the advantage. We already know how lethal battle continuation is, but with Heracles, it gets serious. When he was being restricted by Sakura's shadow, this man tore off his own chest just so he could get away. In his fight against Salter, he drug her across a stone wall for a great distance. In that same fight, he grabbed Salter by the face and pile drove her straight through an entire tower. He had literally lost his vision to the shadow by this point on top of that. You have him casually catching Salter out of the air and decimating everything that's around him. You had six servants, including Mash, with her shield land on top of him and they still couldn't make him budge. You had him charge straight through Medea's field spell and injure her with ease. In Carnival Phantasm, he dashed across the entire city with little to no effort. Still was carrying Kukulin while he was doing this by the way. In his fight against Archer, he strong armed him straight through a castle wall. Even with Ren in his possession, he gave Saber the craziest bitch slap of all time. I told you about having my money. When they were fighting in UB Dub after Saber pushed his sword into the ground, he cleverly abandoned his weapon and started to outpace her with just his hands and his feet. Shout out to my boy Kyron. Even Ren and Shiro were shocked about his freak his speed despite his size. Just Heracles moving through the Ironsburn forest has been compared to an earthquake and a typhoon by Shiro. Even while being blinded and restricted by Sakura's shadow, Heracles still kicked Salter across the lake. He casually kicked a field goal with Salter sending her dozens of meters into the air. When he was having his fight against Asterios in FGO, he punched him straight through Francis Drake's ship, the Golden Hind. In close range combat, Heracles disarmed Asterios while he was getting help from the squad. In that same chapter 
one brutal kick blew David through countless amount of trees. In a bad end, one good hit crushed Shiro's entire backbone. The story tells us that his strength is ridiculously superhuman. He can destroy at least two houses in one blow, and if he wanted to, he could have Fuyuki in ruins by the end of the night. In Heaven's Field, he tactfully tossed up multiple stone pillars against Salter and shot them down at her at mock speeds. The sheer force behind his strikes have been described to be strong enough to destroy a mountain. As we know, he one-shotted several wolves in the Ironsburn forest in order to protect Ilya. Even the debris from his fight against Saber nearly took out Ren and Shiro. By striking the ground, he's casually seen creating rifts in the street and in the graveyard. This too can be used to slow an enemy down. He can casually slice through multiple trees at once. And Carnival Phantasm, just him playing tennis was enough to blow a hole straight through the wall. In his fight against Emiya, you had Heracles smacking him into the walls of the castle. Despite Emiya being a quick servant himself, he was still surprised by his ridiculous speed. In the fate route when Heracles got a hold of Shinji, he straight up one-shotted him and left his remains all throughout the hallway. When Ren tried to use her ice gems, which have enough magical energy to take one of Heracles' lives, instead of dodging them, he was just batting them out the way with no effort. Even when the gems completely froze his arm, he still uppercutted Shiro with that same arm and took Ren into his possession. Again, his shockwaves nearly broke Shiro's leg without him touching it. He can produce whirlwinds with just his swings, another one blowing Shiro straight into a tree. In another classic bad end, you had him smash Shiro's legs until they were 2D and punch out one of his lungs at least 50 meters away. In a different bad end, you had Ilya tell him to cut his legs off altogether so he couldn't run away. In the fate route, the story highlights that in terms of speed and raw power, he's stronger than Saber. Similar to the way he did Shiro, he blew her into a tree. In their fight in UB Dub, again, he sent her dozens of meters all the way into a cemetery. During a bad end, he straight up blocked a weakened version of Saber's Excalibur, then smashed her to pieces right afterwards. In his fight against Gil, he was deflecting multiple high rank phantasms from all around him. Even when he got hit, this still didn't stop him. The story tells us that Cursed Arm Hassan has absolutely no chance against Heracles and he would slice him in half with one shot. In Ataraxia, just him barely touching Angra Mayu was enough to send him flying. Again, you have the story telling us that he flat out passes Saber in raw power. It's stated that every single one of his hits would be fatal on her and she's forced to defend majority of the match. And Saber is a top servant. She says herself that getting hit by a direct attack would mean instant death. Despite Heracles having his arm frozen and him only having his axe sword, he was still overwhelming Shiro's projected caliber. This is the same sword that took more than half of his lives later on in the story. In his fight against Saber, even when she blocked his attacks, Shiro mentions that it was still enough to leave her dazed. Despite Saber having the force behind her from an aerial strike, he still had the strength to block her with one hand. He casually launched Saber into the sky with no effort, then immediately slapped her into the ground. Despite her getting one of the first hits, he still overwhelmed her and tossed her into the air. Again, you have his martial arts that allowed him to surprise Saber with the ferocious left hook. In Heaven's Field, you had the story hint that Heracles is just as strong as Saber in her altar form. He just lacks the magical reserves. Plus, he had to deal with the shadow. In Unlimited Codes, you had Medea in pure shock that in just one interaction, Heracles landed a devastating blow on Sasuke. With multiple buffs, he was one of the main reasons we were able to defend against Suitor in Lost Belt 2. To put that into perspective, Suitor is one of the strongest antagonists in the Nasaverse and could easily devastate all of Earth if given enough time. His phantasm was 4 million degrees Celsius and Heracles was still one of the only people fitting to do the job regardless. In his fight against Skyhawk in the Grail Warfront manga, he knocked down 6 gay balls at the same time with no problem. Again, Skyhawk is a master fighter, Ku's teacher, and a known god slayer. His ridiculous strength allowed him to smash Saber around like she was a rag doll, then toss her to the side. Still not impressed? This man ripped off the upper half of a tower and threw it at Salter like it was weightless. Just the residual damage was enough to blow off an entire wall of the Ainsburn Castle. In Carnival Phantasm, he threw Ku with enough 
enough force to send Emiya into space and beat them both. We've seen in multiple interactions that just him doing his roar is enough to shake the earth and put out a gust of wind. Shiro mentions that just being in the presence of Heracles is more frightening than his childhood trauma of the Fuyuki fire. He also brings up that his presence makes him feel like he can't even move. The idea of Shiro approaching Berserker without a plan alone would make him have a heart attack. In FGO, you had Ritsuka mention that he felt more fear of fighting Heracles than he did when they went against Fafnir. Reminder that Fafnir is an entire dragon, the same one that was taken down by Siegfried. His aura was making Ritsuka's body shut down and make him start to hyperventilate. The story tells us he could do the same to a servant. Again, on his final life when he was against Gilgamesh, it tells us that he defied the laws of the Grail War and death itself. You have Musashi, who is also a top servant. Even she doesn't believe that she's on the same level as Heracles. She also complimented him as a hero. In his fight against Saber, it said that her normal attacks were hardly even bothering him despite him being knocked into the air. When he was locked up by the chains of heaven, he still wouldn't budge. The chains tried to pull his arms in the wrong direction and rip his head off. Both tactics were ineffective. Even Gil was shocked by his endurance, saying that the bull of heaven couldn't hold off these chains, but Heracles could. He took a brutal faceplant to Salter's Excalibur, and not only was he unbothered, but he landed directly on his feet. Even when Gilgamesh was unloading a barrage of phantasms at Heracles, he kept walking through them through each revival. From Roman and FGO, we know that he can fight for at least three days straight. In Carnival Phantasm, he fought Ku Cullen one on one for two hours straight and came out on top. The ice gems that Ren used on Heracles were something she had been saving up for years. They're some of her strongest gems and they had enough energy to blow away an entire mansion. And these barely even harm Heracles. When he managed to grab Ren, she used another set of gems to take off his entire head and he came right back to life on the spot thanks to his phantasm. In Heaven's Feel, despite Salter having the clear advantage from an unlimited mana supply, he was still making her work for every life that she took. In FGO, when he got hit by one of Kiyohime's flame attacks, it did absolutely nothing. He was being jumped by five other servants at the same time, by the way. He was mauled on by several wolves in the forest in order to protect Ilya. He completely ignored the damage as long as she was okay. Emiya had to use one of his best techniques, his triple crane attack, injuring his own arm just to get through the thick skin of Heracles. He took a direct hit from Emiya's a rank phantasm from hundreds of meters away and still took no damage. This is real Black Air Force activity. In the Fate Materials, Nasu talks about how the anime actually nerfed him and forced him to use his god hand for the same situation. Truth is, he didn't even need it and this is right after going against Saber. When Gil tried to throw phantasms that were any less than an A rank, they just bounced directly off of his body thanks to his god hand. Gil held him down with his chains of heaven and hit him with one of his strongest phantasms straight through the chest and he still came back to life. When Francis Drake tried to use her phantasms to shoot him with multiple cannons, a nerf version of Artemis tried to shoot him at the same time, Heracles just stood there and tanked it. Is this real life? Is it time to go home now? In his fight against Emya, you had Emya complimenting his agile body despite his massive size. He has extremely fast speed, dodging Gil's chains at the last minute multiple times before their effect activated. When Scotty tried to zap him with an ice crystal, he was able to dodge that as well. Again, Scotty has top tier spells. It said that some of his hits come out so fast that Saber had no choice but to eat them. Saber having great speed and reflexes herself. You had Shiro mention that despite Heracles having a bigger sword and being bigger in size, he was still moving faster than Saber. There was a part where he teleported moving faster than their eyes can keep up with. He easily cut down multiple shots from Atalanta. Despite Atalanta being able to shoot several times over mock speed, he casually knocked several gander bullets out of the air when Ren tried to jump him. These can take down a human in one shot under the right 
right circumstances. You had Archer tried to shoot him before that same fight. He tanked that and knocked down his shots with ease too. Again, he was casually knocking some of the highest ranked phantasms from Gil to the side. Ren was shocked that he crossed such a large distance between him and Ilya in an instant. In his fight against Archer, it's said that he can casually cross 10 meters in an instant. He closed the gap between Shiro borderline teleporting before he could even respond. You had him close the same type of gap to catch up with Ritsuka and FGO. There was a fight where he took on an entire dragon as well as other enemies by himself. You have his B rank mad enhancement boosting all of his stats in exchange for his sanity. You have his A rank battle continuation which guarantees his utmost survival no matter what. He's not going down unless you give him your absolute best. You have his bravery skill which is A plus. No matter how big or how bad you think you are he's not backing down from you you do have holes in your armor and he's going to find them it makes his regular attack stronger and it cancels out mental spells you have his a rank divinity thanks to him being the son of the king of gods zeus himself unless you have a whole team of servants or a servant that can match his level of mystery don't even waste your time his legend is so great that he lived alongside the other gods at mount olympus after his death he has the same level of eye of the mind as emia the difference being that Heracles has the false version. While Emiya was able to obtain his eye of the mind through sheer experience, the false version that Heracles has is one that naturally puts his instincts above others. The story tells us that his intuition is on the same level as Saber, who has the actual instinct skill. It's this same skill that had Shiro convinced that he must have eyes in the back of his head due to his unearthly reactions. In his berserker form, his hits have so much speed and power he has no need for technique. The story tells us that normal attacks can be healed in minutes and you need the highest level of normal attacks to pull that off. Then for actual fatal wounds, it would only take him three days. You have his axe sword, which isn't even a real phantasm by the way, that was created from the foundations of an Einsburn temple. But he's stuck using this sword because it was his catalyst to be summoned as a berserker. So while everybody gets to use their best weapon, dudes out here fighting with the red random acts. He's giving y'all the handicap and you still can't keep up. You had Ren also mentioned that he outclasses Saber when she analyzed his data, complimenting him before the fight even started. You had Saber compliment him during their battle, saying that despite the fact that he lost his sanity, his sword skills remain superb. She can't help but respect it. From the fate materials, we know that he is the highest level of a warrior you can be. He has the qualifications to be in every single original class except the caster. He's mastered every weapon, his best class being Archer, and thanks to him being restricted in Stay Night, we couldn't even see him use them. You had Ren mention that he is the most powerful servant when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, saying that she believes that not a servant prior to him could match him at close range. You know how crazy of a statement that is? That's five wars worth of servants. That's at least 30 servants, a good portion of them being deity level. Respect his body. The story tells us that Ilya's servant is the most powerful. He's the most famous out of all heroic spirits and there should only be two servants at the most that can match his caliber. Emiya being the anomaly. This is a retcon now considering that this only addresses the servants that were out by the time of Stay Night. There's a ton of new servants that's been released since then but it does still say a lot about his stature even if that is the case. He defeated Emiya and took his life in a one-on-one -on -one after losing six of his lives. Even even at her full potential, Saber has doubts that she can completely beat Heracles. In the fake route, just Saber fighting Heracles for a short amount of time had already put her to her limits. Emiya himself says that he can fight the other six servants on his own and beat them all. In a Q&A, Nasu says that if Heracles went against Cursed Arm or Sasuke, it wouldn't even be a fight. Medea, with all of her help and territorial advantage, would still lose, and while Ku can boost himself with runes and he might have a better chance than the others if they fought the match would still be more in the favor of Heracles. Da Vinci says that he once took on giants to help out the gods at Olympus. You had Jason mention that he took on the three-headed hellhound Cerberus on his own. The story tells us that he helped out in the great war against the divided spirits of Safar. Thanks to his background and his 12 labors he is the most recognized hero in Greek myth. This gives him one of the highest fame boosts you can possibly have which in turn makes him stronger as 
a servant. Saber herself mentions that despite her being King Arthur, even she doesn't reach his level of fame. The crazy thing about it is that the wars take place in the east and he's still on top. You had Nasu mention in the fate materials that if Ku, Heracles, and King Arthur were summoned in Western Europe, Heracles would still have the most consistent boost of them all. In a Q&A, you had Nasu mention that Heracles would come in second place in an eating contest, just falling short to Saber. We made it this far and now it's time for the nonsense. The most unique ability of Heracles, God Hand. One of the greatest abilities in fate to this day. Thanks to his 12 labors, it gives him 11 lives on top of his original one. Which means that you need to kill him 12 times or take 12 lives worth of energy just to finish him off. Oh, you thought it was over? That's just the first part of the ability. The second part is that he nullifies anything less than an A rank, which means if you try to come at him with anything less than the best, it won't even harm him. Need I say more? You can't hit him with the same thing twice, which means even if you have a strong weapon, you would have to find a different method each time you take one of his lives. You would have to find 12 different ways for him to die. If that wasn't enough to take all your hope away, his lives can be rejected generated if he has a proper master. Ilya, for instance, can regenerate a life every three days. You have Ren's Gander Bullets, one of her go-to spells. They have no effect on him. The story even points out that it's not even the magic that's canceling it out. They just don't do anything. It's like she's shooting marshmallows at him. In the Fate Route, just Shinji trying to punch Berserker had his arm bent like a puzzle ring. Shiro tried to smack Berserker with his bow and it numbed his entire hand. You had Shiro shoot him directly in the face near his eye and his defense just negated it. In Hollow Ataraxia, you had Bazette hit him with two Frogger Rocks, one of them blowing a hole through his face, he still survived. This is the same high tier phantasm that was able to one shot Artoria and Ku. The same shots that Emya made that could mow down houses, it tells us that they did nothing to him. He ate them. Saber tells us that even if it's a phantasm that destroys the world, he's still going to negate it if it's less than an A rank. You had Saber straight up beating on his defenseless body and he's just looking down at her like is this a joke? Feel free to say cut at any time. You had Archer try to slice Heracles and it only ended up breaking his sword. Archer hit him with a shot that had the same power as a shell from a tank. Not only did he ignore it but he kept fighting Saber like nothing happened. You had three of Archer's shots beam him directly in the forehead and the only thing they did was make him angrier. You had Ren and Emya try to jump Heracles. Ren using her gem cage while Emya unloaded a barrage in his back still did nothing. When Emya took one of his lives with his triple crane technique, he came back instantly. Emya complimenting that he really is the strongest. When Emya fatally wounded his entire body to the point where blood was gushing out of his chest and internal organs was showing from his stomach, he still revived. In the Tiger dojo you had Ilya mention that if Saber is too weakened she could only take two of Heracles lives with her Excalibur at best. Despite Ren blowing his head clean off his shoulders it came back in literal seconds with his revival. The story tells us that it would take Ren 25 max power gems that she's been saving up her whole life to fully get rid of Heracles and this is after he lost half his lives to Emya. Saber blew open his entire upper body using her invisible air and his revival just filled in the gap. He came back to life several times over after being spammed by Gilgamesh's Gate of Babylon and UB Dub. Despite him being blinded and fighting against the effects of the shadow, he was still coming back to life multiple times against Salter. You had her cut his entire upper body in half with her sword. He came back from that. You had her incinerate all of his limbs with her Excalibur Blast. He came back from that. You had her burn him alive in massive infernos multiple times how do we tell him in the fate materials you had nasu mentioned that berserker doesn't even need to die to get the perks from god hand just receiving an attack can triple his resistance to it the first time bazette killed heracles and ataraxia she shot him straight through the heart and he came back to life 10 seconds later in lost bell 5 when heracles was being buffed by multiple casters you had him take a direct hit from lost bell artemis to save several servants 
Artemis. Again, keep in mind that Lost Bell Artemis is capable of destroying entire planets. Remember when I said he can survive anti-world phantasms? You thought this was decoration? He is really like that. And not only did he tank one shot, but it took another one for her to completely take him down. In FGO, when he was fighting against Skyhawk, he took a direct hit from her gay bug alternative and his god hand brought him right back. Even she had to compliment him saying that she didn't hold back at all. Then you have his nine lives phantasm. This is the same phantasm that he used to defeat the hundred headed Hydra in his myth. The phantasm itself is actually a style, meaning that the move is relative to whatever weapon he's holding. Sword, shield, spear, bow, all of them have their own versions of the nine lives style. In FGO, you had him use this to overpower Mash's Lord Caldeus, which we've seen tank countless things throughout the FGO story. Again, he did this with his axe sword, which isn't even a real phantasm. The phantasm itself comes out in nine high speed overlay hits. We've seen Cheryl copy this in Heaven's Field when he had access to Archer's arm. And then in Prisma Ilya, you had Kid Gil pull out his true nine lives, which is nine lives in his best class archer. Nasu described his archer version in a Q&A to be nine high speed lasers that are comparable to being fired by a dragon. You have Berserker Altar. This is him when he was possessed by the effects of the grail mud. You had him one shot Shiro's black key despite the fact he had strengthened it to the durability of a diamond. It tells us that just his swings alone are comparable to the force of a hurricane. Shiro says that just being grazed by him in this form would scatter his head like tofu. He was casually slicing through entire trees when he was chasing down their group. He was casually uprooting trees and throwing them as projectiles in order to slow them down. From the fate materials, we know that he was able to halt his last strike against Shiro for the sake of Ilya and allow Shiro to get the win. Nasu tells us that he did this through sheer willpower similar to his fight with Gil. From Heaven's Field, when he was chasing the group down in the forest, we know that he can run at nearly 50 kilometers per hour. The story tells tells us that he could easily close 30 meters in less than three seconds. Being in this form, he's even more enraged, in some ways making him more dangerous than he was before. And then you have Shadow Berserker over in the Prisma Ilyaverse. You had Miyu's Mystic Code Sapphire tell her that even her physical protection buff couldn't stop a direct hit from Heracles. This is on top of the fact that the Shadow Servants are only a portion of their true strength. You had Luvia and Ren work together to bind him in a spell that was strong enough to hold a phantasmal beast, he still broke out. Against Miyu, he's easily shown crushing a stone wall with the back of his fist. Even while using the saber card, there was a time where her blade couldn't even cut him. Just casually tossing Miyu was enough to crater her into a stone wall. He can and will use entire boulders as projectiles if he has access to them. This forced Ren and Luvia to use their gems to protect themselves. You had him blocking combined shots from Ilya with ease. He took a max power blast from Ilya at point blank range and the only thing it did was slow him down. He took a direct blast to the face from Miyu and just ate it. He tanked elemental gems from Ren and Luvia plus boulders and came out without a scratch. You had him being hit by Gaybog and Excalibur blast multiple times. He came back from those. As I mentioned before, it took them nine Excaliburs via the second magic just for them to take him down. You have Megalos, which is Heracles empowered by Scheherazade from the Agartha singularity. Columbus mentioning that he's more dangerous than the earthquake in the chapter. He managed to leap a ridiculous distance straight into Wu Zetian's castle in a battle against Wu herself. In one strike, Megalos was able to completely erase her from existence. Astolfo tells us that he smashed one of the torturers in the chapter like a pancake. In close range combat, we saw him completely wipe off the top half of an Amazon's body. Scheherazade mentioned that just one strike from him would be enough to end them all. Even Columbus was surprised at how strong he still was when he was being held back by his phantasm. In his fight against Zetion, he completely ignored her mental phantasm before he took her out. You had him instantly regenerate his hand after he had it destroyed by Pence phantasm. There's the time when Dayon straight up sliced off his fingers. He said that Megalos didn't even flinch from his approach. You had Astolfo completely turn his legs into spirit form with his phantasm and in order to get them back this man smashed his own legs just to regenerate a new pair just looking at Astolfo's face I can tell this is around the time that he wanted to clock
clock out. And if that wasn't enough, he's about two times his original size. And from Ataraxia and Carnival Phantasm, you have his Berserkar form. Who needs a whip when you can just turn into one? From the race itself, we know that he was going at no less than sonic speed. During the race, he's actually the one that got rid of Sasuke by shooting him straight off a cliff, RIP to a real one. From Ataraxia, we know that it can shoot laser beams out of his eyes and put out energy waves. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, True Archer, Heracles, and Alcides. From the moment that True Archer was summoned, he was on bad timing. His master tried to order him around with command spells, and Heracles was like, that is nothing to me. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna let you use your command spells on purpose, just so you know I'm not the one to play with. Just him releasing his energy was enough to blow multiple people into the walls. It took his master three command spells to stop Herc from resisting the pollution of the Grail Mud. At that point, he turns from True Archer to Alcides, his Grail Mud altered counterpart. We know that he shot an arrow at Gil and his master that spanned over 20 kilometers in an instant. This forced the activation of Gil's auto defense system that shoots lightning. You thought that was impressive. How about the second shot that went past his lightning and actually hit him? Yes, the novel says verbatim that this man is casually shooting arrows that are faster than lightning. I'm done. From Gil's master, Tine, we know that Alcides and Hippolyta are around the same level based on their aura. When he was up against Hippolyta, he nullified five of her magical boosted arrows just using the arrows of his own. To hit her with even more of a flex, it tells us that the arrows themselves were only an inch away before he decided to respond. Chief Reeve mentions that just a stray shot from his back and forth with Gilgamesh would be enough to demolish a whole building. Just one of his arrows that was deflected by Philia was enough to one shot a crowd of demonic beasts. As Nasu mentioned before, his arrows are said to resemble laser beams. Hitting Humbaba in the back one time was enough to make her scream out in pain. You had one of his shots make a 10 meter crater, the residual damage being enough to knock nearby officers unconscious. You had the story hint at the idea of him taking down a 10 story hospital with just his bow, saying that nobody would be surprised if he did. During their fight, you had him fire multiple arrows at once at Hippolyta, all of them coming from different directions. Everybody knows that the fight that he had with Gil was crucial. Gil hit him with a tornado of phantasms. Thousands of phantasms pouring on top of him at one time, cursed swords, the best spears that you can think of, thunderbolts, and none of it worked. Alcides blocked it all. Then taunted Gil by calling him weak. The ultimate disrespect i've never seen gil so mad is this the part where you're supposed to be serious you must have forgot that i'm really him gil and his master were horrified that he came out without a single scratch on him he even told gil bring me your best weapon then we can talk about being on the same level until then i don't want to hear anything about it again when hippolyta tried to hit him with several of her shots who we already know to be extremely powerful he just knocked it to the side with his bow just one of her reinforced shots is enough to destroy armies, plural, and he knocked it out the way like it was nothing. When the clan Calatin police force tried to hit him with several pseudo noble phantasms, he swatted them away with his bow as well. He also responded by sending back a shot that cratered through the road. The time that he was confronted by Officer Winger, Alcides moved at a speed so fast that he couldn't even keep up with it, practically teleporting, then broke the officer's neck and launched him into a glass door. One of the officers had a shield pseudo phantasm. Just him blocking one of Alcides' light shots felt like he was getting hit by a grenade and blew him away. Him focusing his energy and stomping alone was enough to lift the concrete all the way down the street hundreds of meters away. You had Hippolyta try to shoot another shot while she was accelerated on horseback. He deflected this as well. Similar to his berserker form, you had him casually toss giant boulders into the sky to a point where you could hardly even see them. His jumping ability was enough to clear a magic smoke screen despite it affecting his ability to see. When Philia sent back one of his arrows at the same speed that he shot it at, he literally grabbed it out the air from behind him with his hand at the last second, back when he threw the boulders in the air. He also broke the boulders, filled the rubble with magical energy, then shot out a rain of arrows that was strong enough to create their own tornadoes behind them. Then 
he used the tornadoes in combination with the reinforced rubble on Gilgamesh and Hippolyta like it was a game of magic pinball. Now that he's become Alcides, his class has changed from Archer to Avenger and he's given up his godly name to go against them. This comes along with him covering his face to further reject them. And since the process was unnatural, he still receives the perks of being an Archer when he's in this form, technically being half of both classes. Due to him being an A-ranked Avenger, he can now use the Grail Mud to reinforce himself to his heart's content, this being attack and defense. The average fighter just looking at him would nearly be enough to end them. When Flat and Officer Winger tried to jump Alcides and injected him with Hydra's Venom, the same Hydra Venom that brought the end to his life, the Grail Mud just ate the Venom off of his body. Keep in mind that the original wound ate off his side and was deep enough to show his rib cage, and it still just peeled off and went back to normal. Just him releasing his energy was enough to create a tornado around him, blowing away familiars and bringing officers to their knees. When Hippolyta ran her spear directly into Alcides' arm, the Grail Mud was already healing the wound when the spear was still in his body. Right after his Hydra wound on top of that, the Grail Mud can act on its own accord and formed a pair of jaws to track down Hippolyta. He has a rank magical resistance. Any spell on this level or lower will flat out be negated. He is completely immune to any spell that's modern magecraft. You would need an Age of Gods level spell to even harm him. Though it didn't tell him what it was, you had his Eye of the Mind warn him about Winger's Venom before he even used it. You had the Technique warn him about Jack the Ripper when he was sneaking behind him. When Flat used his spell that made several implosions all over his body, his nerves, his organs, including his brain, damaged to the outside in the same locations. Even with an attack that should have ended him, he still negated it and just endured the pain. The only reason it got that far is because he robbed Jack the Ripper of his power, making his anti-magic more vulnerable. When Flat tried to use his illusion spell that would normally work, Alcides saw straight through it. His battle continuation is even higher than it would be normally coming in at A+. Using this, he was able to survive a brutal beating from Jack the Ripper's Phantasm from Hell, which literally uses his background to merge with demons from Hell itself. He had a countless amount of demon counterparts dogpile Alcides as well, and he just shook them off. They also loopholed through his defense, meaning he had to truly endure all the damage. The story tells us that going stat for stat, he passes Gilgamesh too. After his fight with Gil and Hippolyta using his Grail Mud, he shown the ability to teleport at will. Then we have his phantasm. Due to the pollution, he's lost access to his god hand, which means that he's lost access to his 12 lives. But don't feel too bad for him, because now that he's not restricted by his berserker form, he has access to his king's order phantasm. That being 12 different phantasms that embody his 12 labors. For the first of his labors, you have him defeating the Nemean lion. This is the lion that had the skin that was impenetrable to traditional attacks. The cloth that he uses to cover himself is actually the skin of that same lion, meaning that any weapon created by man that hits the pelt will be negated. Using this, he was able to completely tank the damage of an earth-shaking punch from Hippolyta. The story saying that her one punch had more effect than all of Gil's phantasms just to show the magnitude of her punch. The skin also helped negate her arrows when she fired them at Alcides. Before he brought out his counterparts, Jack the Ripper's attacks were having no effect on Alcides. When one of the officers threw an entire pseudo phantasm spear at Alcides, the attack was reduced to minimal impact. This same attack would have been enough to pierce an armored truck. No matter what pseudo phantasm all the clan Calatin officers tried to throw at him, blade or projectile, none of them worked. You have his fourth labor, the Aramanthian Boar, where he took on the immortality of Chiron that allowed Chiron to end his life. He now has this as Alcides. When he was hit by the Hydra poison, the Grail Mud didn't just end the pain. He still had to go through everything you would from this attack, but his immortality in his Grail Mud helped him shift the pain into more power. He has access to the Stymphalian birds that he defeated in his sixth labor. When he was up against Philia, he shot a bulk of arrows into the ceiling that transformed into giant metal birds in mid-air, then rushed her with bloodlust. It was these same birds that helped reveal to Alcides that Flat was using his illusion spell. From his eighth labor, he has now received the horses of Diomedes. He has four 
abilities that he can bring out at will, even using one to escape the reality marble of the Horsemen of Pestilence. Even when they're not in his possession, he can still sense them due to his Lincoln origin. For his ninth labor, he has access to the War God belt that belongs to Hippolyta. The belt itself allowing you to reinforce something with the Divinely Aura. When Hippolyta reinforced her arm to strengthen her spear attack, Alcides applied his belt to his bow and just deflected it. And for his 12th labor, of course, him defeating Cerberus in his myth, he has access to the three-headed Hellhound Cerberus. The story telling us that Cerberus is no smaller than the size of a full-grown elephant. And the crazy thing about it is that Strange Fake is ongoing, so we're still learning about the rest of his 12 orders. Then you have his true nine lives phantasm. When he was in his second fight against Gil, right after he had came out of his battle with Jack the Ripper, he was shooting down hundreds of Gil's best phantasms from the gate of Babylon with ease. Mind you that the shots from this phantasm can change trajectory in midair, and any phantasm he did happen to miss, he just contorted his body to knock them down with the pelt. Wildin'. And then you have his last phantasm. Yes, I said another phantasm. Reincarnation Pandora. A phantasm he gained from being in the Avenger class. This allows you to completely steal the phantasm of somebody else and make it your own. When he was going against Jack the Ripper and Jack the Ripper used his phantasm to steal powers from hell, Alcides used his Pandora to steal Jack's phantasm and become a demon himself. I know what you're thinking. What is going on in Strange Fate and why am I not on that? This is insane. He got a ridiculous increase to his overall strength. His wings alone were enough to slice Jack's demon counterparts in half. And not only did he steal the phantasm, he usurped it. So Jack lost his power when he did this. Him along with all of his counterparts reverted back to normal. When he flapped his wings, it was already starting to get rid of the magic magical smoke screen nearby. Listen man, I know a lot of people just want to give high ranks to their favorites. I don't blame you, but you gotta understand there's levels to this. His character isn't even done yet and he already stomps 80% of the verse. What are you gonna do with him? He's immortal. He has 14 phantasms, some of which we haven't even seen yet. In some forms, he has his god hand, 12 lives that can be regenerated over time. You can't kill him the same way twice. He is the most famous hero in Greek myth. He is one of the greatest warriors in any myth, period. He's going toe to toe, sometimes even outdoing some of the strongest characters around. He can steal somebody else's phantasm. Let's be real. There's going to be people that hop under here and say that he was bluffing against Gil to steal Aya. When you block thousands of phantasms, including thunderbolts fire and ice and come out without a scratch at all it's not a bluff now hold this ex these boys are not seeing hurt he's a straight goon and that's being generous 